to tell you a story of two friends who are going to a party. So they walk in the door and of course they each have a story to tell to the giant group of people gathered there. So imagine that you're in this group and you're listening anxiously to what they have to say. So friend number one, let's call her Angela, says, uh, I had the most awesome time doing stuff. We went to this place and it was so much fun. Friend number two, let's call him Mark, says, you know, yesterday was just one of the best days of my life. I went to Wild Waves with Angela and we went on the scariest ride ever. We must have dropped 40 feet. That was a pretty amazing day. So would you rather listen to friend number one or friend number two? The difference between the stories that Angela tells and Mark tells is really just one thing. Or maybe it's what they don't tell that makes it different. You see, Angela starts off with some very general words. She says stuff, place, did stuff, fun time, nothing very concrete. So you don't really have a good visual image. You have this sort of floating, uh, very general idea. Now, if you listen to Mark's story about going to Wild Waves, riding on a scary ride, you know at the water park, you know it's some sort of roller coaster, uh, and you know who he went with, when he went, the other day. So the number of details he provides allows you to paint a more vivid visual picture. Now, who would you rather listen to? Friend number one, Angela, with the uh, lack of details, or friend number two, Mark, with uh, the gushing all about exactly what happened? Well, there's also a friend number three, of course, who is, the, and that's the one that says, well, we went out to the ticket counter at 3.43 p.m. and we bought two tickets which were printed out by a, pr a ticket printer, which made the funniest noise, squeak, squeak, squeak. Okay, but we're not going to talk about friend number three who describes a little bit too much because today our focus is really descriptive writing, how to up your game and go from being friend number one to friend number two and hopefully stay away from being friend number three. You see descriptive writing really all around. You might say, well, descriptive writing, that's really just for people who want to sound all boring and classic literature-ish. But it, uh, descriptive writing is not just a skill of master writers. It's also a skill of the wonderful marketing team at Red Robin. Yes, you heard me correctly. Uh, if you look at the menu of many restaurants, and um, Red Robin is just the one that I found, you'll take, a, take the time to look at the byline underneath a dish and sometimes there'll be this really mouth-watering descriptive uh, kind of explanation of what it is so if you look at say for instance the burning love burger then it says you'll get fired up for the crisply fried jalapeno coins tangy salsa and spicy pepper jack cheese layered on top of our cayenne seasoned burger so think of how many adjectives you can find in just that one sentence uh, I'm going to make this a little bigger so you can see and it already starts with this sort of yogurt fired up for the crisply fried so it's describing these jalapeno coins which are like deep fried jalapenos, tangy salsa and spicy pepper jack cheese. So in just the opening sentences to describe a burger you see examples of descriptive language and descriptive writing at work. And this isn't just limited to making your mouth water for food or to books trying to get you to imagine something or even to your friends telling you a story. Descriptive writing is really everywhere. News reports are a good way to find descriptive writing. Try listening to the radio sometimes. And uh, so on my local station, KOW, NPR Philly, they had a story about improving Ballard's Rain Garden program, so in Seattle. And this is their opening line. Carrie Matson is standing in front of her home in Ballard on a sunny day. She's looking at her muddy parking strip, which juts out several feet into the street. The strip is a sloping trench, a couple of feet deep, with waterlogged grassy plants at the bottom. There's no standing water in the garden right now, but that's because the city sent some trucks to drain it. So you see how this is about the rain garden program. The main point of the story is not Carrie Matheson's uh, parking strip, but they take the time to describe the environment. It's a sunny day, muddy parking strip, waterlogged grassy plants. They use these really descriptive specific words. And just in the opening sentences of that story, even though you're listening to it on the radio, you get a rich visual picture from it. So imagine that story if they'd simply said, Carrie Matheson is in front of her house, it's wet. Would that have been nearly as interesting? So descriptive writing 
provides uh, a little spice and flavor to everything, whether it's a burger or a radio story, a friend's story, or maybe just maybe a piece of writing yourself. So next time you're going to a party, whether it's writing your masterpiece book or maybe just working at a, uh, making a menu, make sure that you are friend number two. Thanks for watching and enjoy the next videos about descriptive writing.